In the early days of the jet era, the aviation engineers at de Havilland came up with a remarkable type, second only to the renowned Gloucester Meteor, the Vampire. The iconic aircraft was not only the second jet fighter to join the ranks of the Royal Air Force, but it was also the very first to be powered by a single jet engine. Back in May of 1944, the RAF made the decision to produce the Vampire as an interceptor aircraft, and within two years, it was already in operational service. With its sleek twin-boom design and powerful single engine, the Vampire quickly made a name for itself in the aviation world as it took off to the skies, ready to achieve numerous aviation firsts and break several records. Straight through. The end of World War II was a fascinating time for military aviation, marked by a race to develop the first operational jet fighter. At the forefront of this technological competition were the Germans and the British, an unspoken arms race that led to the development of two iconic types, the Messerschmitt Me 262 and the Gloucester Meteor. Still, the roots of one of Britain's most successful post-war fighters can be traced back to 1914. Sir Henry Tizard, a prominent figure in aviation history, approached de Havilland with a bold proposal to develop a new fighter using revolutionary jet engine technology. Having access to Frank Whittle's pioneering work on gas turbines, Major Frank Hatford, an aero engine designer at de Havilland, decided to develop a straight-through centrifugal engine, the Halford H1, later renamed the de Havilland Goblin. It was capable of generating 3,000 pounds of thrust, which was considered high at the time. A modern F-35's turbofan generates around 43,000 pounds of thrust. After completing the design work on the engine in April 1941, the first prototype was tested a year later. The new de Havilland Goblin engine began to rectify the issue of low power outputs for early jet engines. For the first time, it was possible to consider single-engine aircraft. And while the company is best known for its wooden wonder, the beloved Mosquito, the aircraft they would design around the Goblin would become one of their most famous designs. When in doubt. The success of the Gloucester Meteor soon caught the attention of the aviation world. Naturally, de Havilland Aircraft Company was approached to design and construct an airframe for the DH Goblin's turbojet engine. The company initially developed the so-called Spider Crab, otherwise known as DH-99, an all-metal twin-boom tricycle undercarriage aircraft armed with four cannons. Its unorthodox arrangement of twin rear booms, mounted behind the egg-shaped wood and aluminum fuselage and a single engine, was considered highly experimental at the time. Still, using a twin boom allowed for a shorter jet pipe, avoiding the power loss that a longer pipe would cause in a conventional fuselage. The tailpipe was also free from interference from the exhaust. But the Ministry of Aircraft Production had doubts. The design's lack of detail and the overly optimistic structure weight seemed far-fetched, but the Ministry nonetheless permitted it to proceed in July 1941. In response to Ministry recommendations and to maximize the efficiency of the new technology, the design was modified into a mixed wood and metal construction which was then redesignated as the DH-100 Vampire. The first prototype DH-100 Vampire, serial LZ-5548G, took its maiden flight on September 20th, 1943 at Hatfield, flown by Jeffrey R. de Havilland, son of the company founder. The Vampire's twin boom design was a rarity among fighters and was unlike any other jet at the time. The P-38 Lightning was the only other fighter to feature a twin boom design prior to the Vampire's introduction. The aircraft went into production the following year, missing active war service by a thin hair. A favorite. Due to production pressures and capacity limitations at Hatfield, the English Electric Company at Wharton had to step in and produce the first production DH Vampire. Despite arriving after the end of the war, the aircraft was highly anticipated and became the second British jet fighter to serve with the Royal Air Force, or RAF. In fact, it was given the privilege of leading the flypast over London during the VE Day celebrations. On June 8, 1946, 
Fighter Command's 247th Squadron introduced the Vampire to the British public as they led the flypast. The aircraft had a unique design, with its twin tail boom and pod-like fuselage, making it easy to recognize both in the air and from the ground. It was also highly versatile and set many aviation records, including being the first RAF fighter to exceed a top speed of 500 miles per hour. The Vampire's impressive capabilities were due to its powerful Goblin engine, which allowed it to reach a top speed of 548 miles per hour and have a service ceiling of 42,800 feet. The aircraft quickly became a favorite among pilots, especially after Captain Eric Winkle Brown successfully landed and took off from an aircraft carrier using a Sea Vampire in December 1945, making it the first true jet aircraft to achieve this feat. Later on, the Vampire's first active combat experience followed, which took place during the Malayan emergency of the late 1940s and early 1950s, in which communists fought for Malaya's independence and a socialist economy, while the Malayan Federation and Commonwealth forces fought to protect British interests. It was used in various ground attack missions. Later versions of the jet were also deployed to the Middle East and Africa. Likewise, the Vampire briefly saw service in 1954 against Mau Mau insurgents, the culminating response to British colonial rule in Kenya. Eventually, technological advancements surpassed the aircraft's capabilities. Nevertheless, the DH Vampire significantly contributed to the development of British aviation. Common Interests The primary production version of the aircraft was the de Havilland Vampire FB-5 fighter-bomber, a modified version of the DH Vampire F-3. This variant was also used as the basis for many of the export versions. In addition to the fighter-bomber, separate night fighter and trainer models were produced as the DH-113 Vampire NF and the DH-115 Vampire Trainer, respectively. The Vampire was not only a land-based aircraft, it was also modified for shipboard use, given that the Royal Navy modified the type for carrier-based operations and called it the Sea Vampire. On December 3, 1945, Captain Eric Winkle Brown successfully landed and took off from a jet fighter from the carrier HMS Ocean. This was the Royal Navy's first jet fighter, and it was a significant achievement. An experimental version of the DH Vampire, featuring an extended wingspan and a DH Ghost engine, set a world altitude record of 59,446 feet in March 1948. Later that year, six Vampire F-3s became the first jet fighters to fly across the Atlantic for an RAF goodwill tour of Canada. On the other hand, the Vampire was a popular aircraft in the export market with around 30 air forces ultimately operating the type. After witnessing its agility and prowess in the fighter and attack roles, other air forces were interested in the Vampire's capabilities. In 1946, the Royal Australian Air Force purchased 50 DH-100 Vampire F-1, F-2, and F-B variants, most of them built with Goblin engines. However, the second aircraft was built with a Rolls-Royce Neen power plant. Australia was one of the aircraft's main external users, deploying it in various forms until the early 1970s, while France produced their own version of the Vampire, called the Mistral. Many other countries were export users, such as Norway, Rhodesia, Sweden, and Mexico, where it was nicknamed Avocado for its shape and color scheme. The DH Vampire remained a frontline fighter for the Royal Air Force until the early 1950s, after which it was retained only in the pilot training and refresher role. Nevertheless, the aircraft had surprising longevity in several air forces worldwide, with large numbers still in service in the 1980s. The Swiss Air Force was the last Vampire user, retiring their sizable fleet of DH Vampire FB-6s and T-55s from active service as late as 1990. Flying into the sunset. The Vampire's distinctive look and twin boom design became a signature of de Havilland's other aircraft. While this type of design was rare in jet fighters, the Vampire proved to be a more than decent fighter and served with the RAF until 1966. In Britain, the Air Ministry recognized that the Vampire was quickly becoming outdated, especially compared to its rival, the Gloucester Meteor. 
the Meteor 8 version proved superior to the de Havilland jet, leading to the Vampire's withdrawal from frontline service in 1953. However, the RAF continued to use the Vampire in advanced training roles until 1966, when it was ultimately replaced by the full-length Nat. The Vampire was also replaced in the fighter role by other aircraft, such as the de Havilland Sea Venom, and later the Hawker Hunter. Although the Vampire's service came to an end, it remained a favorite among aviation enthusiasts. Some have been presented and are on display in museums worldwide, while others continue to fly in civilian hands at air shows. Its simple design and ease of maintenance have made it possible for many of these aircraft to remain airworthy, even to this day. Welcome to the world of dark documentaries. If you're a fan of gripping, thought-provoking content, you won't want to miss what we have in store. Hit that subscribe button for Dark Skies and smash that like button. Hit that notification bell and we'll send you an alert whenever we post something new. Thank you for watching.